Welcome to July Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring it on to bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests, uh, Facebook changed its entire name to Meta, as in the metaverse. So they're going heavily into the metaverse and how that's going to affect you as a cryptocurrency investor. So we're gonna take a look at uh, what is going on there. We're gonna take a look at the different categories that potentially be a game changer. And we're gonna have my friend uh, Ian come in and give us some of, uh, I like to call Ian's insight. So let's just jump right in because this is uh, one of the crazy days that uh, we're <laughs> we're all been living for. So first up, let's take a look at what's going on into uh, the crypto market itself. And uh, not a bad day. I mean, we've got, we're almost at 2.6 trillion. It's been fluctuating, uh, ad admittedly, but we're still around that same base price. Bitcoin price is around 61K. Uh, we've got some uh, some certain tokens that are up, Shiba Inu being uh, one of them. And uh, of course, that's been just crushing it lately. Ethereum is up 6%, Binance Coin 8%, 3 and so on and so forth. And yeah, Dogecoin making up 27% in the last 24 hours. Ah, excuse me, Shiba Inu was only up for the last uh, hour, but it's dropped 15%. But man, what a run, 143%. So congratulations, Shiba Inu holders. But overall, market's looking pretty darn good as it stands. Also, if we take a look at the ETF, the pro shares is pretty much hovering right where it was uh, before as far as uh, where we were at. Started around uh, 40, 42, and went sideways, dropped some bit, and now uh, kind of recovered a little bit. So, And also the uh, Valkyrie uh, uh, futures ETF is uh, around the same one, although it's been, that declined initially, came up, and then just trading sideways. So not too much going on there. The big news, uh, in my humble opinion, is uh, what is going on with Facebook. And... So I know some people just loved, they either love Facebook or they hate Facebook. Usually on this channel, everybody hates Facebook and that's just how it is. But this is an interesting story and I think it has uh, uh, massive repercussions throughout the crypto and digital asset space. And I'll explain in a second. So this just broke a couple hours ago, maybe three or four hours ago. And what we got here is Facebook complete changes name to Meta. And when I read this first, I'm like, that's cute. That's a nice little way to do things. Maybe they're just uh, doing it as like, like a transient thing, just to kind of, you know, in some kind of like honor or to like, you know, to generate interest. But this is the new change. So Facebook on Thursday announced it will change its company name to Meta. The rebranding also comes after the company has dealt with a barrage of news reports over the past month stemming from whistleblower Francis Haugen's trove uh, internal documents. But this is the big thing. So again, I thought it was just just a, a small piece that they're going to change and maybe just go right back to Facebook because, you know, that's just how they, they do things, right? And just a, a nice marketing ploy. But no, the company will also change its stock ticker from FB to MVRS, as in the metaverse. That is going to affect December 1st. And that is no small feat to change your ticker for a publicly traded company. The company's stock price was up by more than 3% on Thursday. And this is from uh, the Zuck, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. He says, our hope is that within the next decade, the metaverse will reach a billion people. Let me say it again, a billion people. We've only got around 6.6 .6 billion people on the planet. So it's pretty good, pretty good uh, reach. Host hundreds of billions of dollars of digital commerce and support jobs for millions of creators and developers. Boy, I sure hope so. And uh, we can take a look at just how things have changed over the last couple of years, uh, thanks to uh, the coronavirus. Everybody's a lot of more people are working from home. They're working distance wise. So the metaverse could be just a big one just for commerce itself. So that is the first part. And the second part I found interesting. It reminded me of an article I read in AP News. And it talks about this was from October 24th. Uh, it says what the metaverse is and how it will work. I just like to, you know, take a look at what's going on here. And the whole part of it was just, you know, what the metaverse is. I can explain it essentially. Have you ever seen that the movie Ready Player One, where everybody's in this uh, this virtual reality world, and they interact with people and they can have uh, different clothes and they can buy things. That's pretty much the metaverse. It's a, it's a 3D world that you interact with, uh, with your virtual reality headsets, if you have a good, a good one. That's essentially it. There's massive ramifications moving forward. But what it says here is Zuckerberg is going big on what he says as the next generation of the internet because it thinks it's going to be a big part of the digital economy, the digital economy, what we've been talking about on this channel and a lot of different channels for a, quite a long time, the digital economy. And it's a lot easier. And now I understand why why Facebook was so keen on getting into cryptocurrency because I know there's there needs to be some kind of universal payment system that they can use throughout the entire globe because the US dollar just can't cut it. And uh, if they have something like what they have, uh, Libra, and then it was uh, renamed to whatever it is, and that's, uh, I don't know how well that's going. But now we can see that uh, products that are in the metaverse, products that are in, are in uh, digital assets, 
NFTs, products that have to do with payment systems that can be used globally. These are gonna be big. And uh, I think Facebook kind of saw the writing on the wall. And then also, uh, you know, former employee, but this is what was interesting. And Zuckerberg says this, there's also a lot of startups that could be potential competitors. Because remember, people think, oh, well, the metaverse is just gonna be owned by one huge company. Well, I mean, in some certain sci-fi books like Ready Player One, there's a dominant company that's owning a big, large portion of it, but there's a lot of different players out there. And especially right now, it's very early. The big thing to remember is this, video game companies are also taking a leading role. Epic Games, Roblox, name the ones that you have. Consumer brands are getting in on two. Italian fashion house Gucci collaborated in June with Roblox to sell a collection of digital-only accessories. Coca-Cola and Clinique have sold digital tokens, pitch as a stepping stone of the metaverse. And then, of course, it goes into, could this be another way to steal your data? Of course it is. It's Facebook. That's what they're going to do. But the thing that I was thinking about myself was, okay, all these things are coming up. These things are going to happen. And we know they're going to happen. And even Facebook has like kind of come to the forefront and go, this is what is uh, it's actually going to be. And there's a reason why why Facebook acquires different companies or takes root in different things. Like they didn't just sit around and let, let Instagram grow too big. They acquired Instagram. They didn't sit around and go, you know what? We need some type of uh, messaging platform uh, where people can communicate. We're going to acquire WhatsApp. And then, you know, just down the road, they just acquire all these different companies where so they, they want to stay relevant and on top of everything. Now they're saying the next big forefront, which is going to replace the mobile uh, universe that we have because everything was just you know online the browsers then it became mobile and the next step is the metaverse so how can we as uh, as cryptocurrency enthusiasts get ahead of this so this is only investment opinion not investment advice and this is how I see things so if you go to CoinGecko and uh, if you click on categories you can categorize it to a bunch of different things so for this one the thing I would look at is the gaming sector because just like they talked about with uh with uh roblox and uh, uh, uh infinity uh, uh the other ones that uh what do they have it was um uh, uh, now oh, epic games and stuff like that so if there's a way to transact within these games or if there's the way to take some type of weapons or to take wardrobe or anything like that like we've been talking about forever well now that Facebook is doing these things. Maybe they're like, maybe we should get on this a little bit more so. I mean, they're already there, but even to accelerate these things. So this is what I would definitely looking at. I mean, Axie Infinity, sure. Engine Coin, I got a bunch of that stuff. Sandbox, I want a little bit. Wax, be able to trade these NFTs and, and shoot these NFTs all the way on. Alluvium, Veracity, Yield Games, you have a game. I don't know anything about that one. Starlink, heard a little bit. Rank 227. Also, that's a that's an easy play and of course look at the metaverse and then i think again just because facebook is there they're not going to own everything take a look at decentraland the sandbox yield game yield guide games ufo game again starlink again decentral games boston protocol that's for e-commerce and things like that so again look i don't know exactly what's going to happen but i can tell you this this move from facebook wasn't taken lightly to just go let's just go into the metaverse this could be potentially the way that things will go and these are the products to potentially look into the future because i'm not really uh the expert in this sector i'm going to bring in a friend of mine ian Bellina from token metrics he's going to talk to us about what he sees and what he hears especially about what happens with the metaverse and things to actually uh, do a deep dive and look into so let's jump into the interview all right, so yeah, this is pretty big news. Like we just uh, were talking about, I mean, look, Facebook changed their name to Metaverse. Not only that, they're changing their ticker name to MVRS. So uh, like I was talking about, I brought in my friend Ian, Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, because he's, him and his team, I should say, are the ones that do like the real deep dives consistently. So Ian, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Pleasure to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so first of all, let's just get it out of the way. What do you think? Good move, bad move, or just just crazy? A uh, great move on their part, because one, the metaverse is this new trend of crypto and blockchain and VR and AR. And two, the Facebook brand has taken a huge hit. So in a way, they're basically pushing the reset button and starting all over and trying to bring in people who are in, in the whole metaverse, DAO, NFT space and crypto into the, uh, to basically accept them as a company. Shoot. Yeah, that's crazy. And then you said some, so there's a couple of things I want to ask you. First of all, what do you think would be like uh, some pretty good plays to get into? And second of all, what do you think would be, um, is the next big thing? Because you had actually told me about something that's going to be bigger than NFT. So let's start with number one. What's a good play for people to get into? DAOs. 
So I DAOs. think DAOs next year. DAOs. Yeah, DAOs yeah. in the next one to two years mm -hmm. could be the same could have the same catalyst as NFTs this year. This year has basically been NFT season. The year prior was DeFi season. I think next year could be DAO season. No kidding. So okay. So let me let me jump back here. So let's take a look at uh, CoinGecko. What kind of DAOs are we talking about? Uh, so for example, recently this week, A16Z Crypto Fund uh, announced investing and buying uh, tokens and funds with benefits DAO, which is basically a social community DAO of people in the space who are trying to build something greater for the crypto community. Yeah. And it's really tokenizing culture and community. And I think that's something that's going to be huge because we've seen DAOs grow with DeFi pro projects, but now people are launching DAOs just for anything, right? So from buying NFTs, from doing events, from collaborating together. And if this can be a way to get ownership and be a part of that, I think that's, that's huge long-term. In that sense, for example, there was a DAO that purchased a bunch of CryptoPunks at a very cheap price. Right? I think they purchased over 100 CryptoPunks, right? And now, and now, so I, I believe at that time to get into that DAO, it cost hmm. about uh, th uh, 300 Ether, and now right. it costs about 3,000 Ether to get in. So this DAO is so expensive that you have to pay basically more than $10 million to get in. So, okay, so I'm gonna bring up, so I'm on coingecko.com in the categories to the DAO maker ecosystem. So here's what we, here's what they have. This is interesting. Uh, Orion protocol, DAO maker, horde fear. This, this can't be uh, everything. No, that's for sure. No. So, so, so that's not it, but some DAOs to keep in, to keep, to keep an eye on and yeah. to just see how other new DAOs model them, uh, mm -hmm. pledge DAO, they basically do the DAOs that invest in crypto assets from buying NFTs to buying crypto assets to community DAOs, right? And right. for people who want to get alpha, who want to get insights at a deep level with people who are very well known in the space, mm -hmm. you have to basically buy access to these communities. And these communities sure. are tokenizing themselves. That makes sense, like we always talk about. So, so Ian, how do we get into those types of communities? Is it all based on invite only? You have to go through the Discord or how does that work? So for example, let's take uh, Etherox, right? Okay. Very, very expensive. Uh, they're, they're basically NFTs that were just rocks. But the, the reason why people were, buy, were spending millions of dollars to buy them was because there are only 100 in the world. And right. by owning this NFT, you'd become part of a group, part of a community. So they had sure. the private Discord groups, private Telegram groups, private Twitter groups. And one person posted on Twitter that just by joining this group, he's got so many insights that he's made $1.5 million in the last one year from the tips and investment advice being shared in these groups. This right? is, yeah, this is the new financial elite, really is yeah. what, what's going on. Because before it was all, it was all closed doors. You had to know somebody to know somebody. Now you can know somebody, but you have to be in the forefront and really be an innovator, it sounds like. Yeah, gotcha. so you can achieve that by one, getting in early in these communities, or two, buying in late by buying NFTs, or three, these communities will now progress towards DAOs because they now have to have a governance model, right? So for instance, uh, a new DAO just launched where mm -hmm. people are pulling their funds together to buy a basketball team sometime in the future. <laughs> right? So wow. products like this are just fascinating because yeah. this could actually happen. That is interesting, which brings me to my to my last two points. First of all, great insights, Ian. Always always great to have you on. So uh, with this one, I will just say, if you guys are interested in, in insights like this, this is Ian's, uh, Ian's site, and uh, him and his team have built a, a pretty good information hub called Tokenmetrics. And uh, you can sign up. Ian, anything you want to uh, go through as far as uh, what, to, what to look over here? Yes, yes. So this is the new and improved Tokenmetrics version 2 mm -hmm. we launched recently. Um, mm -hmm. So the main thing to look at is a TM grade. That's our machine learning, our AI going through and rating over 6,000 crypto assets based on different metrics such, such as quantitative data points. We have trading signals that tell you whether or not we're bullish or bearish. Uh, so for example, our, our AI has been very bullish on SHIB uh, and also on SOL, so Solana, Shiba Inu, Illuvium. Sure. So for anybody out there who's a, who's a trader and wants to find these new products early on and know when to get in and also want to take profits, this is a good platform for you. Perfect. And then on top of the other things that uh, Ian was just talking about as far as insights. And then lastly, before I forget, you got a book out. You uh, found the time to write, to write the book, finally. Yes. Crypto Investing Guide. Yeah. So this book has, we, we, we launched this book last month. Uh, it's, it's a great book for anybody who wants to learn crypto, 
We talk about DeFi, NFTs, uh, and just really getting involved in the space. And we go through our entire research process on how to evaluate crypto assets, how to find good investments, how to filter out the noise. And this is a book, actually, our research team has been using internally for a while. And now we've made this available to the, to the public. Perfect. All right, my man. Well, that's it. Like, I, I know you're a busy guy. I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on this because this was uh, kind of beyond me. So I appreciate it. But uh, any last words of wisdom before we take off? Yeah. I mean, crypto is the future. Uh, go slow. Uh, think long term. Uh, we're here with you. Rob's here with you. And uh, thank you for everything. Yeah, man. Thanks. Okay. Let's jump back. All right. So I hope that helps. Uh, I want to thank Ian again. That was pretty, pretty great stuff. Uh, you can find the link to token metrics in the description below I'll also uh, put on the very part for the comments so it'll be pinned at the very top and that's it for today so interesting day we'll see how it all works out if you like today's video go ahead and give it a thumbs up that helps tremendously also consider subscribing yeah, i mean a lot of things are happening super fast around here so definitely want to be up to date and that's it for today thanks so much i appreciate it see you on the next one